the umbrella rig, the A rig, the Alabama rig, the chandelier rig, whatever you call it. And that's what we're gonna talk about today. The umbrella rig for beginners. You know, the basics of fishing the umbrella rig so that you can catch more fish with this rig. My name is Wes Littlefield with yourbassguy.com and today's video is all about the umbrella rig. Now a quick disclaimer, if you're a pond fisherman, this really isn't for you. I've tried fishing in ponds and it's just, it's tough to put it that way. You know, it resembles more of like a, a bait fish school of shiners or small shad, you know what, something like that. And it's just not something that you tend to see in ponds and it gets hung up a lot and ponds typically aren't that deep. Then of course they've got a lot of grass or they've got, uh, you know, trees, tree stumps, whatever. And it just makes the umbrella rig not very effective in ponds. So if you're a pond angler, I don't recommend this lure, but if you're curious about learning it, let's get to it. So I want to start with how to rig it. Now, as you can see here, I've got five hooks and these are just, uh, you know, jig heads. You can use whatever weight you think. I would suggest going with the lightest because more than likely you're gonna have at least three, but check your local regulations because some states like mine allow five hooks that you can have on here and some only allow one. So you need to be extra clear on what your laws are when using an umbrella rig before going to the water. Now back to rigging. I simply just take a jig head, like I said, whatever weight size you want and put on your soft plastic. Sometimes it can be a paddle tail like this. Other times it can be a fluke. Uh, you know, it, it kind of depends on the fish's mood. You'll also notice that I used four paddle tails and one fluke. And this is just to give the bass something to key in on on this lure so it's a little bit different it's different colored it's got a little bit different action and more than likely the bass will key in on that one and that's the one that will get bit the most I'm not guaranteeing that but i'm just saying for whatever reason changing up just one can drastically increase your bite ratio just because those bass will key in on the one that's just a little bit different colored that's a little bit bigger in size or for instance, you know, this is a fluke or instead of a paddle tail or vice versa, whatever, that's a qu quick rigging tip that really works. To tie on your line, I'm gonna use fluorocarbon, at least a fluorocarbon leader because braid lacks stretch. And so sometimes you want that stretch, especially with this lure. And so having just a, a shorter fluorocarbon leader is, what I highly recommend when using an umbrella rig. Another thing that you have to use or have to consider is number one, a really strong rod and a strong reel. So what do I mean by that? I don't necessarily want like a broomstick rod, but I want a long rod, at least, you know, seven and a half to eight foot. The longer, the better, because it helps with really casting and getting it a, a, a really good long cast with it for this lure then you need a heavy duty reel because this is heavy. When you start to add up each jig head, the weight, and then the lure itself, it's a lot of weight that you're pulling back and you can strip the gears. I've done it with some of my other reels that just, they weren't built to use an umbrella rig and I just stripped the gears in it eventually after fishing a day with an umbrella rig. And so I don't want you to do that get a heavier rod, get a heavier reel, and you'll be better prepared. Now, back to the rod a little bit. I like a little bit softer tip, not like just crazy soft. So typically I, I like a fast action. So you've got a little bit softer tip. Number one, this helps with casting. It helps load it up and you can cast a little bit better. And number two, when you're setting the hook, it's less likely to rip that hook out of the fish's mouth as you would if you were just fishing with a very stout, stiff rod. So now let's move on to how to fish it and where to fish it. I don't throw this thing around cover. They're too expensive, so I'm not gonna allow a fish to, you know, find a, a stray limb to wrap me around and I'm stuck losing them. You know, shoot, that adds up to, this was 15, 20 bucks, another 
five, ten dollars just alone in jig heads and then of course the soft plastics. You know, it, it adds up quick to where this is an easy thirty dollar lure and I'm just not okay with losing thirty dollar lures. So I tend to fish in the open or around rock and that's really it because it has a tendency to get hung up. And same thing like with grass, I'm not going to fish it around grass because it's just going to get snagged and then I'm dragging a piece of grass and it turns the fish off. So I'm fishing it in the open and around rock piles, it's less likely to get hung up on rocks. So I'll fish it around the rock piles as well. How am I going to fish it? This is really one of the most important things. It's critical really to have sonar, to have good sonar. If you have live scope or live sight, that just tremendously helps because you can, number one, you can see this moving through the water and then you can see where the fish are and how they're responding to it. So if you need to slow down or speed up, you can react and understand immediately. If you don't have that, if you've got decent enough sonar and you know that, hey, these bass are suspended out here, first you need to figure out the fall rate of this and all you gotta do by that is measure it out, you know, 10, say 10 foot line and just drop it to the bottom, let it sink. And once you feel it hit that 10 foot point, then, you know, um, as you let it sink, you count. And once you feel it hit that 10 foot point at whatever, you know, five or six or seven or eight, what, however fast you counted, then you know, well, this is about my fall rate. So when you cast it out there, you're gonna cast it and count that down to where you think it's just above the bass's heads and then reel it over the top of them. You don't want it to sink down to the bottom and you don't want to drag it along the bottom because more than likely you're going to get hung up and the bass are typically going to be feeding up anyways. So you want to keep it right above their heads. Once again, that's why sonar is important. So you know what depth to fish it at. That's the basics of fishing an umbrella rig. Now there's obviously a lot more to it, but by going out there and testing this, playing with this, mastering these skills first, then you can be ready to go and move on to more advanced techniques and figuring out just how much you like an umbrella rig and understanding why that they were banned and they are banned in so many tournaments. The last thing that I'm gonna mention is just the different types of umbrella rigs. You know, you, I've got a, a little bit bigger one. You can see this one is smaller. That I've got five, both of these are five wires, but sometimes they're three. Sometimes they're four. It just kind of depends on, you know, what which one you have. Sometimes they've got little spinners like this one does. Sometimes they don't like this one, but there's really just learning how to play with it and which one your bass like, that's gonna help you out the most. Uh, you know, I recommend starting off with a cheaper one and then working your way to more expensive ones because more than likely you're gonna mess up and you could accidentally get hung up and lose that lure. So I'd go with the cheaper ones first and then, you know, work my way up to the more expensive ones, but you do you. So that's what you need to know to get started fishing umbrella rigs, Alabama rigs, A rigs, chandelier rigs, I don't know, whatever you want to call it. Depends on where you're from in the country. But if you find that they're really keying in on just one jig, then it might be time to put down the Alabama rig and switch to Damiki rig. And the Damiki rig is an excellent cool water lure. And basically it's just this, it's just a jig head and a soft plastic, but there's a few ways to fish it and learn it and rig it. And that video is down below me if you want to check it out. Otherwise, I want you to always remember that education is important, but fishing is essential.